No one can understand me anyway. <laughs> Is it better if I speak through this? Yeah, I just don't speak at all. No, I didn't notice I was trying to steal the table while he was talking. <laughs> just moved into a new house in LA and I'm like, this would look great. <laughs> I'm sure I could just check it in. What am I, Delta? They won't notice. How are you? How are you? Amazing. Thank you so much for coming. I love, 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 love you guys. I travel around the world because you feed me, you look after me, you dress me, not in much, obviously, but you know, everything. Oh, thank you, I thank you, Dad, sir. Dad, I told you, not while I'm working. So, um, I, I just adore coming to conventions and meeting you guys because I wouldn't be standing right here and I wouldn't have been able to do all the super cool things that I've done if it wasn't for you. So thank you a million, gazillion, and more times over. You're all truly, truly amazing. I am the most open book, because <coughs> I trash the place. I'm the most open book that you'll ever meet. You can ask me anything and I will just make up some story. I don't know the answer. Um, but I'm very, very chilled, relaxed. You can throw stuff at me, it wouldn't be the first time. Um, uh, I can kick it off by letting you know I, um, as we all know, there's been a few challenges and stuff with, with this little doozy and but as soon as I heard a ripple of it, I'm like, no way, Jose, I'm there. And they're like, no, it's fine. I'm like, no, I'm there. <laughs> I said, this has been booked for a year. I don't want to, even if it's me speaking to myself, which happens quite a lot, I still want to try and come and be part of, of making us come together on some level, whether it be three of us or 3,000 of us or 200,000 of us, which was Comic-Con three weekends ago. And I'm actually quite relieved that I'm here now compared to them. <laughs> it was insane. It was really cool. So the conventions are great because it's showed me, like there's not many mediums where I get to meet people that I look up to and I respect. So I love these, these conventions because, you know, um, film and television uh, now is a really cool way for us to kind of escape from our mundane lives sometimes or our bills or our pressures or our husbands or boyfriends or kids or whatever and it's, it's super super cool to actually meet people that you know have lived in the television screen all our lives and one of the really amazing things about Farscape was I was a baby I was like you know 23 24 and I had grown up watching uh, you know, all my Australian television idols, not like Australian Idol. <laughs> we didn't have that back then when I was a child. We had three television stations we pretty, pretty much still do in Australia. Um, and it was really cool because all the um, top actors in Australia wanted to come and work on Farscape because it wasn't a show where you were a doctor or a nurse or a, a you know a cop or a robber you got to play an alien and fly around in a spaceship so i would have like people you know like that i've been watching on the television you know since i was three years old four years old five years old come and i'm trying not to fangirl out over them you know i'd be really cool and be like hey yeah this is how how you work right jordan and then they, they walk around like <laughs> this is how you fly Moyer, and this is how you, you know, it's like, what the? <laughs> so that's super, super cool. Um, and recently, I uh, was asked to come back, and I was working with the Jim Henson Creature Shop Challenge. I don't know if you guys have yes. seen that. Yeah. Yes, it was wonderful. Which is such a cool show, and that's, of course, why they're not picking it up. Oh. They offered, apparently, this is the story I heard, but you never know, there's always so many stories, but they offered to... Um, to uh, pick it up for a quarter of the budget. And they said, well, uh, Brian Henson said, no, because the creatures need to look amazing. And already it was run quite tightly as well. So, uh, so the whole reason why I moved back to the States from Australia <coughs> was because originally I, I came over here for the Henson show and I was just staying as a, um, you know, I was working from, I was still based in Australia. And I turned to my husband and I said, look, I know it's going to get picked up. Everyone's telling me it's the best thing. It's so amazing because it was so 
beautiful that I, I like I, when I got there and I saw Brian, I, he's like a, a dad, a brother, a soulmate, a friend, a visionary, a, a god to me. And I was like, why me? You could have had Claude, you could have had Ben, you could have had Rigel, and he's like, let's not even go there. And I was like, but I want to know. <laughs> Is it because I'm that cheap? <laughs> But he's like, and it was so cool to be invited to to be part of that process. And I'm really nervous about reality TV because it takes over, obviously, you know, professional gigs. And now you have so many uh, actors, celebrities doing bloody reality TV because we can't get uh, work on normal jobs and we have to pay the bills. So anyway, I, when I spoke to Brian about it, I said, look, I'm a bit nervous about it. And he said, look, when you meet the creature designers, they're so humble and they're so passionate and they're so, they're geniuses. It's not like gonna be some tacky, uh, you, know, you know, beat the clock kind of drama, drama, drama. And, and it wasn't, and that's what I really liked about it. And I did think, I did think it could have, I think it could have had a different recipe, like the way I, I think it could have been a bit more different to face off from Project Runway and every other bloody reality show. But, because I think Henson's deserves more heart energy, more something from the soul. And we've seen that, we've seen that. You know, that recipe of the, the three judges and the host and the competition and the top. We've really seen that a million times. So I, I said to Brian, okay, look, if I, come on board, I really want to eat me, I want to get in there, and I want to be like, well, can I build a sock puppet? And he's like, yeah, yeah, you can do all that. And then so I get there on day one, and I'm like, okay. So I start speaking to the the creature designers, and they're like, shh, you can't say anything, you have to be professional. And I'm like, the host. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's more interesting when people are real. Mm -hmm. And then I can be the person asking the silly questions because that's what the I would be doing as a viewer at home going, well, but how does that stick onto that? And how's the puppeteer gonna, and it's, it, it, you know, those silly little, anyway. Um, but it was a lot of fun. And one of the other reasons why I really loved it is because every single person that we've ever met has been influenced by the Henson Co Company in some way, with, whether it be the Muppets, the Dark Crystal, the Labyrinth, the Storyteller, Fraggle Rock, We've all, everyone's been inspired by them, you know, or, or knows them. So this is like the very first time that we actually got to see into the creature shop. Seriously, goosebump <laughs> village. It was unbelievable. And they would give the scripts so late. And they, you know, you, you never see what they, you know, they make, you, they always shoot 50 million more times than what you ever see on the screen. And it's kind of like panic attack material because they would have, um, like, you know, a three-page intro, and this is Kirk Thatcher, and this is Beth Hathaway, and this is Brian, and blah, blah, blah. And then, um, and then we would shoot it once without the creature designers there. And literally, there's like 20 cameras staring at you, and they're like, oh, by the way, we rewrote this page. I'm like, what, which, what, what, what page, which, what? And then the makeup's there doing their thing, and then costumes there, sticking stuff onto your shoes, and, and then you're like, and then action. <laughs> and then you've got this funny little microphone speaker thing in your ear because I've never really done a hosting thing before. I've always been able to hide or I'd always found safety in a character. Um, whether that character, it's definitely part of me and it's reacting as opposed to acting, but then it's coming from a different spot. It's not Gigi going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that was kind of terrifying. So if we have this. Um, little speaker in my ear and you can speak, the producers will speak to you, but you've got your hair over it because they want it to be, if they don't want the creature designers to know that, they want them to be, they, to put them in the most terrifying position so they get the really good drama uh, and to also make it as real for them and try and not have people running around and people in their faces the whole time to try and let them freely explore their characters, their creatures, their whatever. So strangely enough, you know, so we'd do the first take and then Brian would bloody improvise all the time. And I'm like, you just be the host. Quite clearly you wanted to be the host. Why am I here like you said? And, and then when I was three, I built a Kermit the Frog. I'm like, okay, your stories are always going to be better than mine, all right? You don't have to rub it in. <laughs> so he's very, very cool. Um, so we were there, we were, you know, 
um, going through bits and pieces. Um, but the very first elimination round sucked because these I'm 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 that person. I'm like you know I'm a, I'm an artist and I spend my whole life waiting for the phone to ring, going have I got the role? Have I got the role? How am I going to pay my next bill? Oh my gosh, I want to be follow my passion and my dream and my truth and my whatever, but at the same time, I can't put petrol in the car to get to the audition. So it's all that kind of fun fun challenges in, in life. So the very first time when we were eliminating the first people, it was hor- It was absolutely horrible. And they make you stand there and, and right, and I would, I would always, my, my position is where I feel comfortable was here. And um, <clears throat> and right before the take, they would go, uh, please don't Gigi to close her legs. <laughs> and then I'm like, <laughs> like this, and all the creature designers are looking at me like, why am I like, that looks like I'm not to go to the bathroom. And then, and then Brian hears, because sometimes they can hear the, what other people say, sometimes they forget to turn off the channels who they're speaking to. And then Brian goes, the whole reason why we got her is because she, Chiana looks like a cat, and she stands like a cat. So let her stand like a cat. And, and then I'm like, like, and then they're like, no. And then they're like, have you seen Face Off? Have you seen how Mackenzie? And this is all happening in the ears. And I'm like, <laughs> on and on it goes. The creature designers are like, she has lost the plot. We all know that anyway. But So yeah, it was a pretty cool experience. 